decided to send one of our fellow Pima priests who wanted to be incarnated into the Diocese of Honolulu to one of the outer islands, thinking that this priest, who was from the Philippines, is always obedient to his bishop, he told Father Pasquale that his next assignment would be on an outer island. Of course, after enjoying the comforts of Oahu, Father Pasquale was not about to take that idea very well, and he was going to put up a fight. He told the bishop he didn't think that it would be a good idea for him to be sent to one of those islands across the ocean. <laughs> hmm, thought the bishop. Here is a priest who is not willing to be obedient after taking on a new, about taking on a new assignment. He thinks he can stay here in Oahu where he can get it easy. Well, I got good news for him. I'm going to send him to Our Lady of Good Counsel Church in Pearl City, where there is a multi-million dollar project going on, and those parishioners there are tough people to work with. And if they find out that he is not doing what he's supposed to do, they would have no problem but go to the bishop and give him an earful about how this priest is not really shepherding the flock and there is unrest in the parish. Your first year here, we learned that we were getting a parochial vicar straight off the boat from the Philippines. And people were a bit worried that now we have two Filipino priests who will be speaking their native language, which most of us couldn't understand. They may be even talking about us, and who knows what they were saying. Well, it worked, it worked out that Father Ray and Father Pasquale were a good combination, and the people were happy. Father Pasquale was taking it too easy. So when he went on his vacation, Bishop Larry assigned Father Ray to another parish. And he sent Father Ray and Father pa and he sent Father Pasquale, a newly ordained priest who came from China, <laughs> Father Paul, whose English wasn't that polished. <laughs> there would be a problem. But no, that didn't work out either. So when assignment time came again, Bishop sends Father Paul out to be pastor at St. Juan. Now Father Pascal is again alone in his state parish. Promises of getting a parochial vicar kept coming. First, they went and sent a Mexican priest by the name of Father Clarence, who comes from the mainland. Then he's taken away again, more promises. We then get Father Art, who didn't last very long because he got assigned to hospice. Father Nick was, came over and he didn't stay very long. He got assigned to St. Jude. After a while, Father Rufino shows up, only to find out that he was only on temporary assignment to OLGC, later to be assigned to Maui. So what's with all these temporary assignments? I don't think there was ever a priest that had that many parochial vicars assigned to him in one year. In the meantime, there have been a lot of changes going on here, where the rectory went through some big renovations. It became the OLGC Motel, with many visiting priests checking in. And the chapel became the pastor's suite. <laughs> the pastoral center got completed and is done without having to make a loan from the diocese, which is a good thing. Then more surprises. Still no permanent par parochial vicar. And still the third phase of the project is now on hold for maybe three years. Even if the termites are still holding hands to keep the office building standing, Guess who gets to leave? Yes, Father Pasquale. Just running away from completing the third phase. <laughs> During his time here, we found out many things about him. From his mom who made frequent visits here, 
and became very good friends with many of the Parisians. A couple of things that we learned about Father Pasquale was, when, was that when he was five years old, he wanted his mom to buy him one of the bishop's hat that he saw on display. But his mom said that he had to become a priest first. And while in the seminary, he gets into a fight with another seminarian. And you should see the form he showed us. Look out, many Tarqua. If he should ever decide to take up boxing. Because of the fight, he did not receive one of the crosses that is given to a seminarian in good standing, which his brother had gotten. So the OLGC parishioners, who are still so very thoughtful people, gave him his cross when he became incarnated in the Diocese of Honolulu. <laughs> Father, 13 years after your ordination as a priest, you are still without that bishop's hat. <laughs> so we had to send a letter to the Pope <laughs> to get a permission to grant a five-year-old boy his wish of getting a bishop's hat. Of course, we didn't tell the Pope that that was 40 years ago. <laughs> and so we'd like to present you with a special gift so that you will always remember us here at OLGC. And the good that you have. Okay, another uh, 
from St. Jude in Makakilo. I, I hope I get this right, Father Epitor Gore. Epitor <laughs> Gore? <laughs> okay, thank you. And of course, everybody knows Father Paul Lee from Kahuku and Okay, continuing on our, uh, on, our, on our show this evening, we present to you from the Filipino community um, this little. There's uh, little kids from Our Lady of Good Counsel School. They represent the Filipino community. They'll be rendering you a Filipino coconut shell dance. Okay? Thank you. 